Don't mix your 808s. Here's why and here's what you should do instead of mixing them. The only thing that I'm doing here is side chaining and putting the kick and the 808 in mono. The reason why is because they sounded good right out the gate. It's all about sound selection. Picking the right 808 sample is key. And all these packs that we have nowadays that all these professional sound designers are making, they're already being processed and given to you in a way, in a form that you don't have to do much besides tune and level and maybe side chain if you have a kick drum attached to it. What I want to do is mix things around the kick and the 808, especially in hip hop and in trap music and EDM where bass pretty much drives everything everything and if you're using an 808 it's going to be smart to mix everything accordingly if you have synths and you have melodies and samples and other instruments that are taking up some of that low end frequency range we're going to try scooping some out of that instead You can hear that they're thinned out a little bit, meaning I scooped a lot of lows out of those. So that way when the 808s come through the mix, they shine and they cut through so nicely without having to do anything to the 808. You're doing things to other instruments. So you can see in this flex instrument I have, I'll pull up the EQ, you can see the lows are scooped out Look right here lows are scooped out that's just going to be ensuring that anything that's in that low frequency range we want the kick and then we want the 808s to really shine through in those areas and this phoenix right here eq lows are scooped out and i also put a little bit of eqing on those to get them to blend together as well but that's a different story for a different video but here you can see that we don't need to mix mix these 808s if you have a kick and an 808 and they are clashing because they are in that same frequency range we could see it just by doing this if we add an eq to each instruments we put one on the kick let's just rename these real quick too kick so that way it's a little bit more clear we have an eq there and then let's pull an eq onto the 808 as well we could put these side by side when they play together you're going to be able to see that a lot of the same frequencies are hitting So that's where side chain is gonna come in. My favorite way is the old free limiter way. So we highlight the kick, go down to the bottom of the 808, side chain to this track, click on the 808. We're gonna be adding in the fruity limiter. Once that opens up, we're gonna hit compressor, side chain to one. It's the only thing that's side chain to it right now. If you have multiple things side chain, you're gonna be able to right click and see a bunch of other things that are side chain to it and you can select from that menu. Then we're gonna bring down the threshold and the ratio up just a little bit so we can see where we're at from here. Now the goal here is to just duck down the initial impact and transient of that kick, or uh, rather the 808, so that way the, the kick shines through and it doesn't clash with the 808 at the exact moment. You can see that it's already doing its job, it's ducking down, not too much, not too soft here. Now, if you want to close that gap, you can see these triangular gaps here. If you want to close that gap up, because the wider that gap is, the more it's going to sound like it's pulsating, the more it's going to sound like it's dipping, and it's going to sound less like it's one instrument, right? The goal is to make it sound like it's one instrument. So if you want that peak to come down further, you're going to pull that threshold down and the ratio down. You're going to see it a little bit further. It's a little bit deeper now. Now, if we want to close that gap, like I was just saying, we're going to pull that release back see that get a little bit thinner now now it sounds perfect i can hear the kick cutting through the mix it sounds like it's one instrument now all we need is maybe some leveling if you want to turn that kick down a little bit If I find myself having to compress or having to EQ or add other plugins on top of it to get the distortion right, nine times out of 10, I should just go find the new sample. Just find the new sample that works better with that mix, with that song and that beat, and that goes along with those melodies. There's thousands, if not millions of 808 samples out there that are guaranteed to go with your beat. So if you're not into sound design and you wanna get the fastest results possible, I really suggest you go and find new samples. The sound selection is key. Something else that you need to do to your 808s is make sure that they're tuned just to go back a little bit, right? So we have our 808 sample right here. To tune this, right click on it, edit in audio editor, or you can hit control E. That's gonna bring up Edison. And then in Edison, you're gonna hit this little flag tool, detect pitch regions, and then zoom in. Sometimes it gives you more than one note, but what you're gonna do is choose the majority. 
So you could see these little two orange cursors on the left and the right. Whatever's in between the biggest space of those cursors, choose that note. That's going to be the note that you need to tune it to. We're in C already, so we don't have to do anything to this. But normally, if you were not in C, what you would want to do is go to the wrench tool and then right click above whatever note it just told you. So let's say if it told us it was a G sharp, we'd go above G sharp, right click above that, and then you're good to go. Just make your patterns accordingly and then just match it to your samples and your melodies. But this isn't C, so we're just gonna leave it there. And then also make sure that you have on cut itself. These are not necessarily mixing techniques, but things that you should do to your 808s, things that you need to do to your 808s almost every time. You're either gonna do cut itself or you're gonna go into the envelope and you're gonna make this box that we have here. This is attack all the way down the hold all the way to the right, decay all the way down, sustain all the way down, release all the way down. And that's gonna make it so it sounds like this. Every time you let go of the key, it's gonna stop. That's gonna ensure that you don't have any tails crossing over into other patterns. Sometimes it's cool to have that. I prefer sometimes to put it into this box right here. That way, whenever the piano roll note stops, the 808 actually stops. Here's a quick example. You can see whenever the orange notes stop, the 808 sample stops unless you had that cut itself option on as well. And then again, just to retouch on this, my kicks and my 808s, I always turn them into mono. The easiest way and best way to do that is to just by going to these knobs down here. And if you don't see those, it's because you're not in this mixer mode called extra large. It's also in wide, but it looks a little different or wide the first option looks a little different. These knobs right here are the stereo and mono merge knobs. I love this extra large mode just gives me a better visual. And then we're gonna go to the 808 and turn it all the way into the purple, all the way to the right. And that's gonna ensure that it's merged completely into mono. Cause those low frequencies, we want those to be straight up the middle and then save that left and right within the stereo field for our melodies, maybe some wide vocals, etc. That's gonna do it for this one. If you have any questions or suggestions, drop them down in the comments below. And as always, share this with a friend if you get me.